Hello, and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. Today, the EDB will be testing this, the Orion 1 Space Liner. With the advent of large landing gear, the EDB has been aiming to create a vehicle that could easily transport 32 passengers to various locations in the system, and this is the result. It was inspired by the vastly superior Orion 3 space plane from Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey, and certainly its styling is an acquired taste, with those intakes on that big forehead. Engineers around the EDB have compared it to the pregnant guppy, the specially shaped plane that transports rocket parts. Kinder comparisons have associated the Mark III hump to the Airbus A380's forehead. In any case, Chief Designer Bert Kerman has noted that it was an excellent place to put the air intakes as long as the aircraft doesn't operate the engines at a high angle of attack, which it should not. And here we go with Valentina Kerman at the helm. Valentina Kerman, the test pilot for this mission. She was already in training for it before Heytrude made her excellent flight in the shuttle, or the EDB might have chosen to go with Heytrude instead. But uh, we see Valentina rotating the craft at a fairly reasonable velocity for an airliner. And landing gear is retracted. There you see probably the least favorable view of it. But in any case, uh, the fact that the EDB is looking to sell tickets on the Orion 1 means that the flight has to be flawless. There can be no overshooting the runway and no excessive G-forces. While the shape might uh, take some getting used to, ED pilots have been uh, competing to fly her with Valentina and Heytrude at the top of the list. This is the expected maximum pitch for the craft on ascent, 30 degrees. That's the maximum stable pitch and you see it's actually leveling off a little bit. It does not have a very high angle of attack. You can see a fairly close to the prograde vector, about 5 degrees or so. And uh, it'll stick right there in order to ensure good airflow through those air intakes and that they're not obstructed by the actual cockpit of the vehicle. The Orion 1 has an array of a total of 8 engines on its tail, 4 rapiers, uh, 2 ramjets, and finally 2 LVNs. Right now it is the rapiers in air breathing mode as well as the ramjets that are operating and they are necessary to bring the heavy mass of this vehicle to a sufficient speed so that when the LVNs ignite and the rapiers go into rocket, breathe, uh, rocket modes, closed cycle mode, uh, it will be able to reach orbit. Here we see uh, the approach to maximum thrust. As the Orion 1 builds up speed, the jets and the rapiers operate at greater efficiency and we see that happening and it's gaining velocity here prior to gaining altitude which will allow it to switch into closed cycle mode and ignite the nukes. We're awaiting... Okay, uh, there we have the LVNs ignite in order to provide extra thrust. As, as the craft gains altitude, the thrust of the air breathing engines goes down and we'll have shut off of the ramjets there. Okay, ramjets are shut down. They're not providing enough thrust right now anyway and soon we'll have the switch of the rapiers to closed cycle mode. And there we have closed cycle mode at about 25 kilometers altitude. The Orion 1 only carries oxidizer in its forward tanks. It carries liquid fuel throughout and will need a full liquid fuel load in order to transfer to interplanetary destinations. And of course with a docking port on its tail, it can attach uh, an additional fuel unit in order to get itself to uh, even further locations that might be more difficult to reach with just its internal fuel. Here we are about to see oxidizer depletion. And at oxidizer depletion, of course, the rapiers no longer function. It is the LVNs that will continue to push the Orion 1 into orbit. The EDB still needs to figure out the optimal trajectory for the Orion 1 space plane, and this was not it. The rapiers need to get the craft to a high enough apoapsis so that the LVNs are not going to have trouble getting into orbit, but also the craft cannot pitch very high in this phase of flight. It simply doesn't have the control in order to maintain a very high angle of attack. So that's why you didn't see it pitch up to 30 degrees. It can't do it. Uh, that will not be a problem on descent, but it is a problem on ascent. Okay, here you see Valentina making the initial uh, 
apoapsis, lifting the initial apoapsis. Unfortunately, uh, she is still in the atmosphere on the periapsis side, and so there will be some drag. This flight will not dock at Hoffman Station. The docking test would require a special docking berth to allow easy access and thorough access to all areas of the Orion 1 for maintenance as well as alternate routes for passengers to disembark. And so that has to be installed by a shuttle before the Orion 1 can actually dock with Hoffman Station. But it is making a close approach to Hoffman Station. It's just to test out whether it has the fuel necessary and here you see that happening. So of course uh, Valentina did get it into orbit. Uh, that uh, would have been a surprise if she had failed to do so. But the fuel, the fuel situation is fairly tight. So that is a consideration. However, the internal fuel of the Orion 1 is enough to make a rendezvous with Hoppin Station and on its own fuel uh, return back to the surface and that's the plan here. So here we see Valentina uh, hanging out pretty close to Hoffman Station until it's time for her to bring the Orion 1 to its uh, standby orbit. Uh, in this case, the standby orbit is 80 kilometers by 80 kilometers. If you recall with the EDB shuttle, the standby orbit was 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. So this has a lower standby orbit. And uh, the intended periapsis for descent is around 32 kilometers. And we'll see, we'll see Valentina bring it down to that here. And of course, while the liquid fuel is very low, the LVNs have extremely high efficiency, high ISP, and therefore they are getting quite a lot of delta V out of that low liquid fuel load. At this point, the mass of the Orion 1 space plane is about the same as the empty EDB shuttle. And so the fact that it has a smaller wing means that it does not have the same sort of lift and therefore can't glide around the way that the space shuttle does in order to correct for a uh, missed landing location, you know, the turnaround. It can still make a turnaround, uh, in theory, uh, but that would not be ideal. And certainly if it misses by a wide margin, that would not be a very good situation. However, it does have a good pitch control here. Uh, it doesn't have very good pitch control on the way up, but it does have very good p pitch control on the way down. In fact, it wasn't necessary to turn on the mop propellant to supplement that. It does have a large reaction wheel in its cargo bay, uh, so that should be noted, and that certainly helps. Only a single large reaction wheel though. And so you see here, it uh, slowly, gently making its way down, and in fact the flame effects going up are much more severe than the flame effects that you'll see as it comes down. And here, uh, maintaining the correct pitch, Valentina is bringing it to an ideal trajectory for a direct landing at the KSC. And here the start of re-entry effects. Holding the nose to about 40 degrees, a higher than the EDB shuttle generally does. And of course that's to generate more drag. The EDB shuttle can generate a lot of drag uh, because of its huge wing uh, at a lower pitch angle. Here the Orion 1 is crossing the coast of the home continent at about 34 kilometers. And uh, Valentina initially thinks that that she is going to fall short of the KSC and so noses down a bit in order to gain lift but uh, it seems like she's right on track here and so perfect trajectory for the approach to the KSC very good control reported by Valentina here and it just continues on descending to 30 kilometers and now over the the critical mountain range of course and at this point switching to air breathing mode on all the engines still not throttling up and uh, we do not think that with this trajectory Valentina would need to throttle up air brakes are on as Valentina noses down now on its descent profile the Orion 1 actually operates a lot more like the the NASA space shuttle than the EDB shuttle does. The EDB shuttle operates very much like the NASA space shuttle on the way up, but it does not have the same flight profile on the way down. The Orion 1 has much more of the same pr flight profile on the way down with the 40 degree nose up, as well as the need to nose down to a negative 20 degree uh, angle with the horizon on its approach to landing. The Orion 1 not only has air brakes, but it does have uh, two uh, drag chutes that it will deploy on touchdown or after touchdown as soon as Valentina thinks they are necessary. 
Here now line up for approach, Valentina is now 3,500 meters in altitude and pretty well lined up there. Valentina deployed the air brakes when she went to the negative 20 degree pitch and she kept them out all the way down and so that's an important note. We don't know what the touchdown speed of this craft is. Based on the rotation speed on takeoff, uh, it's probably less than 90 meters per second since it's now much lighter than it was then. So uh, we're expecting a fairly low, fairly low touchdown speed under 200 miles an hour, uh, probably much less than that. It's probably possible to land this at about 160 miles an hour. And a very good approach right now, under 300 meters, 200 meters, 100 meters, 50, 30, 20, Touchdown, touchdown, uh, took a little bit of time to get it down there, but a very smooth landing, certainly pleasant for passengers. I doubt there'd be any complaints with that one. And the drag chutes are out, and the aircraft is slowing, certainly it will slow within the length of the runway. And Valentina has made a successful landing with the Orion 1 Space Liner. And so it looks like this plane is ready for service. While the EDB might be somewhat concerned with the ability to fill its 32 passenger capacity with potential space tourists and people who want to do work in space, um, we have to remember that these are Kerbals and they don't require any particular encouragement to want to go to space. Uh, they are calculated risk takers and so uh, it looks like this is a very acceptable risk for them to take. The successful test flight of the Orion 1 Space Liner is the opening in a new chapter for the EDB as it gives the agency a new impetus to build large space stations throughout the Kerbal system and also to mine for resources which will then be used to fuel this space plane and allow the free flow of passengers from one celestial body to another within the system. So now will be a goal of the EDB to create accommodations for the 32 passengers and 2 crew around all celestial bodies and also to have refueling capabilities where necessary in order to have this Orion 1 space liner and all subsequent space liners function properly. So look forward to that in the near future. Thank you for watching this test flight of the Orion 1 space liner. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. The blueprints for this liner will be uploaded to Kerbal X once it docks with Hoffman Station for the first time. And with that, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.